Last week on Mama G's Strange Investigations, Los Rio Street, part one of the series, we talked about the hauntings of Mission San Juan Capistrano and captured what seemed to be communication with one of the inmates of the old holding cell. On the second part of the series, the investigators will dig a little deeper to see if they can make contact with the man who is reported to have hung himself within the bars of the old holding cell. the jail cell used to be on the corner of uh, Camino Capistrano and the Ortega Highway and it was moved over by the Silva Sadobi um, in a little less trafficy spot. It's kind of hidden. It's not very big. Uh, you could probably house like maybe five people standing up in there. It's not big at all. Um, I would hate to be in that in the hot ass heat. Uh, during the summertime because I'm sure it's very uncomfortable and the way metal likes to heat up in the sun No, 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 I'd, I'd rather just be a good girl and not be in that thing Which is funny because I locked myself in there for the investigation sure that's not a dead animal. Don't know what it is, but I don't think it's an elsa leaf. <laughs> it's one of those dead leaves. I mean, here, why don't you look and see if that's appropriate. Like I said, I'll turn it on. Do you want to sit, you want to sit here by yourself? Yes. I'm gonna do a countdown. This uh, site was uh, where there was a bunch of gel breakouts and also one reported hanging. Um, of a gentleman, so um, I'm gonna give a countdown. I'm gonna sit here and see if I can get make contact with uh, George. The battery's about to die. Um, is it already? Mm -hmm. I have another battery. Should we change it now? Yeah. Okay, shit. All right, now let's put it back up. Interesting. There's something in there with you. Yeah. All right, now it's going back down to dead. Okay, let's go ahead and change it. There is somebody in there, then. Or in here. I can turn it off and then... I don't like to jump to conclusions as of to results or findings that we have unless there's a probable cause and effect. Um, just because something goes bump in the night um, I need to make sure that there wasn't something over there that caused that bump. Um, I want to make sure that if we have an EMF reading that indicates that we have some sort of electromagnetic pulse field around us, there's not power lines above us. However, most recently in our investigation over at Los Rios Street, that was something that happened that I was unprepared for. Wow. That's... Oh. Jesus Christ, there's something behind me. Look, well, technically there is something behind me. There's what? Some, there's someone here. Oh there's someone behind them. There's someone. Oh, they're gone. 
that's what was draining the battery. Yep. That right there. Yep, they're gone. It's okay. Is that you, George? <sighs> <laughs> Brandon did not like that at all. <laughs> Oh, I'm scared. Oh. Astrid, did you get that on tape? Yep. Okay, good. Hopefully he'll edit that in. I'm oh, so scared. Brandon, they like you. Mm -hmm. No, no, you would not allowed to like me. You're not allowed to come home with me. You're not allowed to be talking to me. I'm well, not... V, V's not here, so they gotta have somebody. No, 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 like... they don't. They gotta have somebody. They gotta find nobody. Not coming home with me. Not coming home with us. So there wasn't really a lot of information about the jail cell itself. Um, we do know it was built in 1896 as a holding cell for the miscreants um, on their way to county jail. I do remember reading about a, gen about a gentleman named George. I don't remember his crime and I don't remember much anything about him, but he is the gentleman that was reported to had hung himself in there. Also making it very uncomfortable for those who came after him and had to sit in that cell. Or he is reported to still haunt that cell. So we decided we were going to try to make contact with George to see if we can get any information from him. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, lights out. All right, George, or anybody else that was here um, a little bit while ago, we were here to talk. Um, if you have anything to say right now is probably the time. It's quiet. Um, we are here by ourselves. Um, if you were not George, what is your name? My name is G. I come with respect. <laughs> what were you put in the cell for? How long were you here? <laughs> if you are not George and you came here after George, what was it like sitting in this cell? Knowing somebody uh, sacrificed their life in it. Thank you for your time. What the fuck was that? What was that? Sounds like a pussy cat. Oh. You <laughs> pussy cat. So we're going to do a spirit box session and see if we can make, if we can communicate with uh, George. Can you please tell me your name? What was your crime? How you, what do you feel about a woman sitting in this jail cell right now? Are you a San Juan Capistrano native? How many times have you been locked up in here? Judge Egan the fair man? You feel like you got a fair trial. Last time I was here, um, I sat in here and I smelled like the smell of like a decaying body. Apparently Tara did, couldn't smell it. Um, and we were here for a while, so I thought maybe, okay, maybe... I, 
animal was somewhere, you know, dead, but we walked around and we didn't smell anything. So, so far what I've gotten here has been smells, sounds, and all of our devices so far have gone off. I just saw like a shadow go across the damn door. But like, not only just like the, like not just the top half, like where that placard is at, right there. Like it just moved. Ooh, I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and um, say that uh, this place is definitely, it's definitely haunted. B, how do you feel about the footage that you have gotten so far? How do I feel about it? I feel more uh, concerned with lights blinking behind my back. That's what I'm concerned with right now. We're just checking. That's a wellness check. And then all of a sudden the EMF starts to spike again. And then the moment we whip out our phones, it stops spiking again. So there's definitely something lingering around us. It's just... Um, giving us a bit of a hard time as far as actually capturing it on, on the camera. Yeah. Oh, they're back, they're back. What the hell is that? Yeah, it just it keeps doing it. I have some like, person to vibrate next to me or something. You feel something vibrate next to you? Yeah. Felt something like, like uh -uh, next to my head. <laughs> You're fucking love. <laughs> Uh, well. Alright, let me out of this goddamn cell phone. <laughs> like, I don't want to be in here anymore. When we were at the jail cell, initially, um, I had walked away doing some just general uh, videoing of a, a side adobe. And as I walked back, I experienced um, what I assume is an apparition or a ghost or a spirit that had left the jail cell that was originally around the other other girls as well as Astrid, our other cameraman. And as it came back, I heard a vibration go literally by my head. And when that happened, uh, my camera picked up a very, very small, very light amount, which could, could, could be construed as maybe a sound from the camera or a sound from um, other objects around me, but it was very distinct. It, it, it literally went by my left ear, my left ear only, and it kind of left me kind of quiet to where when I said, what was that, everyone else just kind of sat there in, in kind of a pause.